Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these really fun and quirky Christmas gift bags. So I've got this really fun Christmas pudding. I'm going to show you the top there. I've used my recycled shopping handles and then inside it's really nice and big. Now you can just put some tissue paper and kind of do it that way or sometimes I wrap my presents in wrapping paper and then put them in the gift box or gift bag anyway. But you can also pop that one together. You can see that it just bends in on the sides. So you could maybe put that on a peg and then peg it together, it's entirely up to you. I am gonna put some Winker Stella on that just to give it a bit of sparkle but I'm waiting for a new one to come. But that is the Christmas Pud and then this one here is Santa's Trousers which I think is so cute and this is a real buckle which I picked, picked up from a haberdashery store and I've got another one which I'm going to use. These are real buttons as well, I've just used hot glue and popped them on the bottom there of his kind of braces and again if you wanted to you can decorate the back but I've just kept it all at the front and again it's a really nice size in side and you can just put tissue paper or again just wrap it. You can also pinch in the sides there if you wanted to and fold it in like so. So yeah, this is what we're gonna make, dead easy too. So I'm gonna make Santa's trousers first and then we'll finish with the pudding. So I'm using my X-cut circle cutter, but any kind of dinner plate, side plate will work, a compass, and um, if you've got the X-cut cutting system as well with all the different circles, I know lots of you have these things now, so I know you'll be grabbing those. So that is handy. There's the buckle. I'm just gonna take, actually I'll do that, I should have done it before. I'm just gonna take the actual bit off there because I threaded the, or weaved the cardstock through that, so I don't need that other piece. That's just my buttons, I'll keep them up there. And then I'll go through those sizes of the straps and stuff when we get to it, but you need two pieces of A4 or letter paper. So I've just got this nice red, although it's looking really orange, but it's not, it's really Christmas red. So you can see that it looks really orangey, but hopefully the pictures will pick up the true color. And then you will need for your base, a piece of five by six. If you want to keep the same color red, you can. I just liked the contrast of the white. I thought that looked quite good. So yeah, six by five for the base and along the five inch side, you want to score at that way, half an inch and four and a half. Okay. Then you'll need two pieces of five by six and a half. And this is for the sides of the gift box uh, or gift bag. And the, along the five inch side, you want to score at half an inch and four and a half, then rotate it and score just at half and do that on both pieces. Okay. And then for his straps or the handles of your gift bag, this is just the length of whatever your letter paper or A4 is, so 11 or 11 and three quarters, and it's by one inch wide. But again, it's entirely up to you. You might do a completely different um, you know, way of closing it. You might not even add a strap. So, And then for his belt, I've just got a piece of one and a half, but that's because it weaves through, if I just do it now, weaves through my buckle like so okay so um you know you can have obviously any width uh you know that you want if you don't have buckles like this all you have to do is just die cut some gold miri card or silver and then die cut a square or a rectangle whatever you've got or another circle oval you know and then die cut a smaller one inside that to give you that frame and just stick it over the top and you'll get exactly the same look so that's that already okay i'm going to get rid of my scoreboard and burnish all of these pieces first just while they're here okay and then with your two side pieces so they're the bits that are the same size and you'll have three score lines on each side and on the bottom with it facing you want the shortest side facing you so you've got your longer sides on the left and the right and you're just going to cut up where these little squares are that cross over here you're going to cut that out so I'm just going to cut up that square there. Excuse my nails, I am getting them painted tomorrow. And then that one and that one. And then just take little wedges off like so. Okay, so I just push that down. That's what you want. So I'm just going to do that with the second piece. Okay, so that's those two pieces like so. And then the base you just need to burnish and just leave as it is. So that's that bit sorted. Now to cut our Santa's shape of the bag. Now, basically what you want to do, because obviously not everybody will have this, this here is gonna go at the bottom. 
like so. All right, so imagine this is the front, we're sticking this inside here. Whatever circle, you know, whatever size circle you use, it has to, once I do it in a minute, but it has to be longer than the six inches of this piece here. So for example, if I show you here, you can see how the six inch white piece, if I move that bit out of the way, there we go, how that six inch white piece sits within this slightly larger red piece. Can you see there's an overhang? All right, just make sure you have that little bit of overhang and then it will fit. So whatever you, whatever thing you're using, plate or whatever. So now when I go to put this in place, this bit here, along the longest length of your A4 letter paper, just sit it, like it doesn't matter where, just pop it so that you can see that there. All right, and pop a little pencil mark, like so. Okay, it's just a guide, okay? You can't really see my pencil marks, but I've got two pencil marks down here. Then with this here, if you're using this, I've got it set to eight and a half, okay? Now, what you wanna do is pop this in the middle here, and I wanna make sure that the blade just roughly goes over that. It doesn't have to be spot on. I'm hovering it all the way around until this side. And again, I can see it's roughly going over that pencil mark. So that is now, I'm happy with that in place. If you've got a plate, you wanna lie the plate down so that it starts, so you've got the plate overhanging here. So you, you, you imagine, if I get, just pop that up there, your plate's gonna come down slightly to the left and to the right of the pencil mark. Go around like that. So you want your plate to come down here and then it go up around here. And that's what you'll draw your pencil around, okay? So now I'm going to start from the bottom here and just go all the way around. I will link this in all of my in my blog post because, I, like I do, um, I always say when I'm using it, I love it. It's brilliant, and the fact that you can change and have it so many, you know, different sizes is just so handy. Okay, so that's that piece done there. And then all you need to do now is you can actually just trace this on your next piece. So if I just bring this one in, if you just, again, line it up at the very bottom, I'm just gonna pop my pencil marks in here, but all you need to do is just go around that with your pencil and then cut around it. But I'm gonna do that and then bring this back in again. Now this time you do wanna be a bit more precise, but I will show you what to do even if it's still slightly out because it really doesn't matter. If you can see here, they're not touching each other. So if this one's slightly bigger or that one's slightly smaller or this one overhangs more than that one, you, you would never know, You no one's gonna tell. So it, it really is a very, yeah, it's very, very simple to do and it's very forgiving. So really, you know, don't worry when you're watching this. But again, I can roughly see that that's gonna kind of go over where I need it to be. And like I said, I'll show you what to do if we are out. So now that's that one done there. I'll grab my other piece. And so I'm slightly out. So what I'm gonna do is make sure you line up the curved part. So I'm gonna just bring that up, make sure that is all perfectly lined up. And I can see there where I'm slightly out. So all I'm gonna do is just cut that off. So that is all I missed it by, that little bit. But now I've got two perfect, and my base is completely flat, but the two perfect sizes. Okay, so now we just need to put it together. That is the hardest bit, it's just making your kind of circular shape. So with my base at first, so with the, the bottom facing up, you wanna pop some glue or some double-sided tape. So I'm just gonna use my wet glue here, which is clogged up, there we go. Just run some along this side first, like so. I'm gonna start with this as the back, and you basically wanna stick this down within the two ed ends of that straight line. So once I bring this up for you to see, make sure it's really stuck down, and just bring up, kind of stand it up like that, and make sure you can't see any white. But can you see now, if I fold that over, see I've got a little overhang there and a little overhang there, and that's what you want, okay? And then I'll just grab this side here. So because this is so deconstructed, you can have this piece inside, you know, you could have it much smaller if you wanted to. I think a lot of you now, once you see this, you'll be like, oh yeah, I can, I know how to make that, you know. 
more specific um, to fit a, you know a certain present or something that you might have but now this bit you just want to sit over the top again just make sure you've got a little bit of overhang on each side so you can just fold that that way again making sure you've got no white hanging out and just hold it up like so so that's what you should have okay then you want to pop your sides down so you're going to stick one like so so that's score you're going to put glue all in here do one of them like so i'm going to stick that in here lining up the score line with the end side of the base there and again just lift it up making sure you get a really nice finish there i've got my nail varnish scraped on that piece but it's fine i can always put a little bit of cardstock on the bottom again do this one okay so that's what you should have and you'll have these tabs hanging over both of those now it's time to stick it together so what you want to do is pop some glue on one side so imagine i've just put glue on here when you bring it up you can stick it right up so it's there as far as this will kind of go out see but you could have it straight if i lie it that way can you see so there it's got a nice right angle but I can afford to go out a little bit like that so you can fan it out. So you imagine if you'd made this shorter, so maybe you actually want to do, what did I say the length of the width of this was? I'm just trying to show you ways to bring it down. So that was five. So you want to keep the width as five and do the score lines as I've done them. But you actually might want to bring yours down to maybe three and a half, okay? If you imagine that that is shorter, you could then stick it like that angle so you, it, it could come right down to here because imagine it'd be like this short because you might have something wider you might want to put a plant in it um just something a bit bulkier i don't know but that's how you can kind of really you know extend this but you'd bring this the sides down a bit shorter so even if you come down you just obviously you're working within that curve there so but when i go to stick this down i'm going to bring it as far to the edge there as i can Okay, so like I said, I'm just going to turn it over that way and just bring up. I don't want it overhanging because you don't want to see the white, but I have stuck it right up to there. See, just left a little bit of a gap. And that way it's really easy now to get all of the sides the same because now when I stick that one down, I want to get it right up to that same. And you can see I've got a nice, you can see there how it looks the same. So again, I'm going to pop some glue on this one and then just lie on its side and stick that one down now if you're not using straps like this and you're using string hang um, handles so like this what you would want to do is before you stick anything together pop these two together and do your hole punches because now as you can imagine if you're going to do that you can't hole punch them the same you'd have to measure and all that lot but if you you know put the two pieces together before we've put this middle bit in and then do your whole punch and you know that you've got them the same so then with this piece here i'm just going to pop glue on both of them at the same time because they're not really going to move okay and then turn it over this way and then just carefully kind of guide them down but they should nicely fall into place like so Apples out, look how roomy that is. You can get so much in that. And you don't want to see the white. See, now when I put it on the side, you don't want to see any white. You can't even see it here either. Okay, so next I'm going to add the belt. So this is going to go right across the middle, like so. I'm going to stick it down with the overhang. So this is the, the length, like I said, uh, one and a half by whatever A4 or letter paper size. Now I'm going to use, I'm going to cover it in wet glue on the sides and then just because I've got a bit of metal and a bit of weight just got my hot glue here I'm just going to put a splodge in the middle there just so that that little bit of weight is kind of held down and then just using the camera here make sure that's all nice and lined up a bit of pressure on the buckle there like so and then the easiest way to make sure that this is nice and flush is turn it over and I'm going to use my older scissors just cut and follow the same curve 
as the red card like so and that way you get a really nice finish rather than trying to you know guess it's so much better doing it this way and there just glue that bit down there we go easy peasy so now all I've got to do is stick oh here's little braces on for the handles so again this is entirely up to you I've stuck them inside you may want to put them outside like I said you may want to do something else you can use brads if you want them to move but again what I need to go in here fits perfectly in the side and that person if this is decorative for me this is to just sit with some tissue paper under the tree and look really nice so I'm not too worried about actually carrying it so I'm just going to grab again my wet glue pop a bit there again it's entirely up to you I'm going to do, do I want them straight again? Yeah, I do want them straight. So I'm going to come in about there. So, see there's the white I've come in. That's about what? About an inch and a quarter that I've come in there. Nice and straight. She says slightly wonky, that's fine. And then again do the front. Now if you want to cross them over you can do so they again look like braces so I could then stick that one across but it does shorten the handle. I did want to keep them quite long and high so again I'm just going to pop this on the side a bit just so I can see where I'm going. Yeah that's fine. And then oh, just bring them both across inside like so. Alright so I'm just going to stick the other side down. And there you go, just make sure you get the same height, but that's pretty spot on. And then I'm just going to add my little buttons, just again for another little bit of detail. So, careful with the hot glue. Just pop one down, like so. Move that across a little bit without the glue showing. There we go. So it's just a nice way to incorporate, again, I like using hardware on my gift bags, as you know, and um, just nice ways to use if you are into sewing, like myself. You know, I've already got a lot of these things at hand. Just nice ways to incorporate them into your paper craft. So there we go, how cute. Can't wait to put the gifts in these, are they? So that is Santa's trousers done. Next we will move on to the Christmas pudding. So it's done in exactly the same way, but I'm gonna show you how I get this simple kind of icing effect. These bits here, and obviously the size of this circle if you're using the same cutting system as me. So, let's grab my scoreboard again. Just grab, there we go. So I got these here, which are just some fabric, like mesh, um, you know, leaves, but again, just die cut some leaves. These are some more recycled handles. I have just used my one inch, is that one inch? It might even be three, no, it is one inch, isn't it? Yeah, um, one inch punch just to die cut three of these. But again, I need to add some Winker Stella. If you've got some Miri card or some glitter card, that would look really cool as well. So for this one, you need a piece of white, um, A4 or letter paper to make the icing effect. So that's going to be to cut for that bit. Then for your front and back, you need two pieces of brown 12 by 12 cardstock. So this was from, this is the colour that I had left over because I just don't use brown. I don't think any of us really use brown like that. I use my craft card, but not brown, brown. This is from the Paper Mania Do Crafts ca capsule 12 by 12 cardstock that I always use, but there was these browns left and I thought, oh my gosh, this is gonna be brilliant for them. So that's why I've got the 12 by 12. So that's why I wanted to show the two sizes. So you've got the Santa's trousers size, because I, I am aware that not everybody's gonna have brown cardstock anyway. Although you may be rushing out now because I think the pudding is adorable. <laughs> so that's the two pieces there. Then for your sides, you need two pieces of five by eight and a quarter. So this is the width of A4. If you're using letter paper, you just need to trim it down slightly. Okay, so two pieces of five by eight and a quarter. And you're gonna score along the five inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch and at four and a half, and then rotate and score at half an inch. And do that on the two pieces. And then for the base, I've got a piece of five by six. So it's the same base as the other one. This is just a lot taller and wider, so you're still getting a lot more space in this. Then along the five inch side, you want to score at half an inch and four and a half. Okay, so that is all the scoring. Get rid of that. And again, you want to prepare these pieces exactly the same way as I showed you with the 
Santa's trousers. So I'm just going to shoot right through this, even cutting that out. All right, so you'll see it all when it's done. Okay, so there's my two sides, just like before, and there's the base just with the sides folded down. Pop that all to one side, and now we we'll get our two main front and back pieces cut. So again, with this one, I'm going to be changing these, this one, sorry, to 11. So I'm just going to move my dial. It was at nine before, now I'm moving it up to 11. All right, so it goes up like six, eight, 10, 12. So 11 obviously hasn't actually got the number, but it's just in the middle there. And you just want to do exactly the same thing. So with this width, pop it down in the middle of your, your card stock here. And I'm just going to pop pencil mark. You want to make sure you get it, you know, equal kind of sides here. Then with this piece, again, you want to kind of hover it around near that pencil, hover it all the way around. And you want it to hit, which it does, perfect. So now I'm just going to pop that in. You can see how big this is, such a nice size. There we go. Cut that one out. Obviously, that's a good scrap. Keep that. You might want to use that for your handles. So there's that one there. And then again, all you would have to do, depending on what you're using, but just trace around that and cut the other one out. But again, all I'm going to do is grab my other piece, use this again at the bottom, put my little pencil marks, and just do exactly the same again. Okay, that's that one. And then I'm just going to lie them on top of each other making sure that I've got them nice and even and I can see there again it's just a minimal amount but I'm just going to make sure I get them the same it's always on a slight angle as well there you go that's just my excess so now I've got two perfect pieces okay so like I said now to put your hole punches in just pop them together and then where did I put my hole punch there's my hole punch it's entirely up to you but I'm going to come in there and oh actually I want to put the white on first so I have to do it again but I can just line it up and one there oh, there we go okay right grab the white piece of cardstock keeping it at the 11 and you just want to get a really nice arch so I'm going to just cut like so just keeping it within the cardstock Oh, for some reason, why didn't that cut through? Oh, I obviously didn't push down very well. Oh, damn it, hang on a minute, let me just show you now what I'm going to have to do. You have to physically pop that blade back in, <laughs> like so, and then slightly out, but it's okay, I can afford to cut a nice new one. There we go, that was unusual. Right, so now we've got that, and you will see Grab this one, it's going to go perfectly over the top, which is what you want. Okay, now we're going to go around this, and all it is is just freehand cutting. So I'm just going to come in and try and keep you know a nice long cut, and then I'm going to go up a bit higher, come down quite tight, and then come down. And the good, the nice thing about this is, no, everyone will be slightly different come up again, go in a little bit thinner, come up a bit higher and then go all the way around and then do this one a little bit different again because it shouldn't all look the same. It is icing dripping, that one's going to come down a bit shorter and then finish kind of curving and just then try and blend it back in to the curve of the circle. Like so, just tidy that one off just a little bit there. Again, it's homemade. I'm really not worrying. And now, this is what completely transforms. As soon as you put that on, look at that. It just looks brilliant. I love, I love doing things like this. So I'm gonna stick that down quickly first and then I'll redo just my holes. So yeah, I'd say stick this bit on and then do your hole punching or just do what I'm doing and just go over it again. Okay. Always make sure your top is all lined up nice and flush and then the rest will just kind of fall into place. Like so. Okay, and then I can just flip that over and just line up 
my hole punch. Like so. And then you just want to put it together. So again, with your base, you want to stick that down exactly the same way as before. So I'm going to whiz through and do this one first. Okay, so that's the base down. Again, you see now you've got more of a overhang on this one. But I mean, you could go to six and a quarter width if you wanted to instead of the six. But I've kept it at that because I think everybody will have a dinner plate or something slightly bigger. So um, if you go too big with this, then it's harder for people to obviously find something that's that big if they don't have the tools that I've used there. So again, just the same way as Santa's trousers. So now you want to stick down these two sides like so. Okay, and then again with this one, I'm actually going to make this wider because I've got something different to go in this. But as I was saying before, so now look, you can either have it dead straight, so a right angle, we'll bring it up there. But if you bring it out like so, so it's got more of a slanted like V shape, you get a lot more in the here. So I'm going to do that with this one. So I'm going to stick it just like I did with the Santa's trousers. So I'm going to get all that done so you know what, you know what to do here now. Okay, so now you can see that one. So you see it's got more of a, a kind of um, vase kind of shape inside. It's huge, just so much space in that one. Whereas this one, can you see the difference there? So just by, you know, changing the angle of where you stick these completely transforms, you know, the size inside. So this one fits something that I need specifically for that one. And now this one is going to fit something else. So we've got our holes punched. So I'm going to grab these bits here I'm going to put these in first just so that then when I stick my kind of little holly down it um, I can line it up nicely with my handles I think the gold look really nice as well against the brown okay and then I'm just going to finish it off now with these bits so I've got my hot glue because this is fabric I'm just going to pop a bead there pop that one on that side and then that one Oop. like so and then put these three little berries down. And there you go. And they are quick to make. I've edited very little out of this video. And I've done, you know, two more gift bags. So yeah, if you do want something really fun and quirky and quick, then I would definitely recommend these. And they're huge. And that is so much better than anything you're going to find in the shops. So there is a Christmas hood. So big I can't get any of them in the view. And let's just bring back in Santa's trousers again. Just so much fun. So there you have it, guys. So it goes. There you have it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this one. There you go. I can just squeeze those two in. If you have, as always, please give me a thumbs up. Check out my blog for all the measurements and the supplies that I've used today. Head over to Mixed Up Crafters as well. If you make any, please share them over there. It's a lovely group, and so many of you share, and I love looking at it every day. So yeah, until next time, see you all later. Bye. Thank you.